This video is a tutorial sheet in support of the videos on behaviour. We're going to assume that students have already looked at the previous videos on behaviour and are happy, and this is the key thing, to make inferences on output behaviour based solely on the poles of the transfer function. So the key word here is inferences, that's not guarantees, it's about expectations and possibilities. We're going to give some typical tutorial questions. Now the idea is students should read the questions and then pause the video and attempt the questions by themselves before they look at the solutions. Now some background. <coughs> what we've covered is depending upon the pole positions, this is roughly what you expect. So obviously anything in the right half plane is bad because it implies divergence. Anything with a large imaginary part implies a lot of oscillation. Anything too close to the imaginary axis suggests you're going to be slow, whereas far away suggests you're going to be fast. And then there's areas in the middle where the message is a bit more mixed. We're essentially using this inference that if you have a 1 over s plus a, which suggests a pole at minus a, you're expecting a component e to the minus a t in the response. So question one, compare and contrast the expected step response behavior of the following systems. So you've got five systems there, um, all first order, and we want you to look in particular at how the settling time and the steady state gain vary for these five systems. Now's the time to pause before I go on with the solution. Okay, first let's look at settling time. Now what I'm gonna do, <coughs> is I'm going to cross that one and that one because they're both unstable. So they give you divergent behavior. So we can't talk about settling time. It's a bit meaningless. For this one here, we've got a time constant, which is 1 over 1.2, something of the order of a second. For this one here, we've got a time constant, which is 1 over 1,250. So in other words, milliseconds, very, very fast indeed. And for this one here, we have a time constant 1 over 0 0.002, which is 500. So, very slow. And that's really all that's needed to um, say, what is the time constant? And the settling time is usually taken, so if I write that, settling time is approximately 3 to 4 t. That would normally be the guideline you're looking at. Um, and we've defined the t so you can see what the settling time would be. What about gain? Well, again, I'm not really going to bother about these ones because they're unstable. And so gain is a bit meaningless because the output is going off to infinity. For this one, the gain is 2 over 1.2. So it's approximately 2. For this one, it's 2,000 over 1,250. And for this one, it's 0 0.005 over 0 0.002, which is 2.5. And that's really all you're asking yourself. What's the steady state gain for these systems? <sighs> What's good and bad really depends upon the context. Question two. Now you'll notice the difference between this and question one is simply that the systems we're talking about are now a bit more complex. They're including quadratic denominators rather than just first order. So again, we're asking you to look at settling time and steady state gain, but we've added this aspect of transient behavior because as soon as you go to quadratic poles, there is more involved transients than you get with first order systems. Again, now's the time to pause and I will go through the solutions. First, settling time. So we need to know where are the poles and where the real part of the poles because that tells us about the time constant. So if I take this pole polynomial, there it is, and find the roots, you'll see you get minus a half plus or minus j root 3 over 2. So the real part's minus a half, so you're talking about a time constant of 2. And the settling time, obviously, 3 to 4 times that. s plus 1.2 you're talking of time constant of 1 over 1.2. For the next one down here, s squared minus s minus 2, you've got s minus 2, s plus 1, 
and this is unstable. So it's a bit meaningless talking about settling time. What about this one here? This is pure sinusoid. So again, you can't talk about settling time because it's going to settle. It's going to, sorry, going to oscillate on and on forever. What about this one here? You've got um, poles at minus 2 plus or minus 2j. So you've got a balance of between decay and oscillation here. But this part, we're only focusing on settling time. The real part's minus 2. So we've got a time constant, which is going to be a half. So that's quite fast compared to the ones we've got above. This next one down here, s squared plus 0.1s plus 1. Then what you've got is the poles, and I'm going to be approximate here, are approximately minus 0.05 plus or minus j1. I know it's not exact, but the differences are not important if you're just trying to make inferences. Why bother with decimal places? And here you'll see the time constant is of the order of 20. So that's very slow. This one down here by inspection, t is going to be 5 because you've got an s plus 0.2. And this last one, again, you will see it's unstable. So there's no point doing anything with that one. Next part, what about gain? Well, I'll do this very quickly because it's rather simple. 4.5 over 2 for this one, 2 over 1.2 for this one. Don't bother with that one because it's unstable. This one is oscillatory, so I'm not sure it's going to make a lot of sense for that one either. This one, 6 over 8. This one, 1.5 over 1. This one, 0 0.05 over 0 0.2. And this one, unstable. So let's not bother. Now, transients. This is a bit more interesting. So we need to remind ourselves of where the poles were and remind ourselves of this sort of map that we had. So we had right half plane, left half plane. So where were the poles for this one? They were at minus 0 0.5 plus or minus j root 3 over 2. So you're talking about poles that have that type of shape. And you might be saying, OK, I would expect not disastrous transients, but on the poor side. It's slightly underdamped. So if I get rid of that bit here and write, so this is underdamped. So I expect a certain amount of oscillation before it settles. This one here is just minus 1.2. That's going to be around there. No problem. Good behavior. This one we've already ignored because we said it's unstable. This one here has got two poles on the imaginary axis here and here. So that's pure oscillation. Transients aren't good at all, and neither is the asymptotic behavior. Next one down here, we had minus 2 plus or minus 2j. So we're talking about, and the scale is not perfect, but poles around here. And you'll see that that's got a damping of about a half. And so again, it's underdamped, but not as much as the first example. So it's still poor, but probably bearable transients, because the minus 2 and the 2j are the same magnitude. The next one down here, you'll remember the poles here were minus 0 0.05 plus or minus j1, roughly. So we're talking about poles here and here. So this is very poor. So you can see lots of oscillation, slow decay. So we're going to get poor transients from this example. And this last one, you see, OK, it's real, but it's just slow. Question three. Compare and contrast the expected step response behavior of the following systems. So again, you'll see this is just like the previous <coughs> two questions, except now we're introducing some third order problems and seeing does that change the sorts of insights we come up with. First then, let's look at settling time. Well, I'm just going to go straight to the real part here. So the real part of the roots. In this case, it's minus 0.5. So the time constant t 
is going to be 2. This one here, the time constant by inspection, 1 over 1.8. With this one here, you've got a pole at minus 1 and two poles at minus 2. So you're going to take the slowest as being indicative of the settling time because the slowest might dominate. You never know for sure, but you have no choice but take the slowest. So here we've got t equals 1. For this next one, we've got a minus 5, but then we've got a plus or minus 2j. So we've got oscillation and permanent oscillation, so we can't talk about a settling time. It's meaningless. So we'll cross that one. The next one. Now this one's a little bit tricky. It might not be immediately obvious to you. This is actually an s plus 0.1 squared. So both poles are at minus 0.1, so the time constant is 10. So it's got nice dynamics. It's just a lot slower than the ones above. This next one, you've got a pole at minus 0.1, and then you've got two complex ones where the real part is minus 1.5. So again, what have you got to do? You've got to focus on the slowest component because that could dominate. So you end up with a time constant effectively of 10. The next one's first order, that's straightforward. You get t equals a half, so that's reasonably fast compared to the other ones here. And then this last one down here has a bit of a subtlety. It's got a root at 0, minus 0 0.2, and minus 0 0.8. And here's your problem. That 0 might mean it doesn't particularly settle. It really depends what you put in as the input signal. So the zero might or might not be significant. If it's not significant, you're then talking about using this 0 0.2, in which case you'll have t equals 5. Again, I'm not going to worry too much about this. You're just looking at the real parts as long as there's not an integrator. 0 0.5 over 4, minus 2 over 1.8, 2 over 4, this one's a bit dodgy because it's um, obviously got oscillation. This one, 0 0.04 over 0 0.01. This next one, 1 1.5 over 0 0.5. 0 0.5 over 2. And this one has got an integrator, so the gain, in fact, would go to infinity in the steady state. So transients, this is what we're more interested in. So let's write exactly where the roots are. With this one, we had minus 0.5 plus or minus j root 3.75 over 2. This one we had minus 1.8. This one we had minus 1, minus 2 and minus 2. With this one we had minus 5 plus or minus 2j. This one we had minus 0.1 and minus 0.1. With this one, we had minus 0 0.1 and then minus 1.5 plus or minus j root 2.75 over 2. This one, we had minus 2. And this one, we had 0, minus 0 0.2 and minus 0 0.8. So what do you need to do? You need to put this on your map of right half plane and left half plane and see roughly where do you sit? So you remember this was oscillation and slow, this was unstable, this was fast, and this was slow. So all you're trying to do is say where do they fit in this particular graph? So if I start with this one, what you'll find is the imaginary part is quite a bit bigger than the real part, so that's sitting somewhere around here. Okay, The oscillation is perhaps dominating the decay, so the transients won't be ideal. This one is sitting down here. Very good. These ones are sitting down here. Very good. This one here, you've got a minus 5, which is good, but you've also got poles on the imaginary axis, so you've got permanent oscillation, so that's not good. These two, both real, but perhaps slow depending obviously on how you want to quantify slow. These two here, you'll see that the real part, minus 1.5, is fairly similar in magnitude to the imaginary part. You're talking about poles that perhaps are here. So you might say that's likely to be 
<coughs> quite reasonable behaviour, the decay will probably dominate the oscillation. The minus 2, again, you'll see is fast and real. And this one here, a bit more split. You're talking about maybe having one pole here and one pole here, as well as the one on the origin. So you're a bit more mixed as to exactly where you will end up with that one. So in summary, we've given a tutorial sheet covering the links between pole positions and expected behaviour, and we've also looked briefly at steady state.